Everybody, it's Tyler here at the championships, checking team number 4481, Team Red Brands coming in out of the Netherlands, uh, a team that we've been following for a while here in fun. Absolutely love uh, this team and what they produce. Uh, talked about uh, awesomeness in this team. This team has completely done a redesign from their last event. And so every single event kind of done a different take uh, on your robot. So very excited to show off what they brought here, uh, the championships as well. And of course, we'll be following that full cargo journey, talking about modularity on the robot, their build process, and some programming as well too. Help me speak more about this team, by the way. I have Julian, Gores, and Corne. And this team, the Rembrandts here, if you haven't been paying attention to them, you really got to. Of course, returning champions for 2019. And we can't wait to talk more about this robot coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, supported by Stryker Careers. Apply the skills you gain as a first student or mentor and help change the world at Stryker. Stryker is the top career choice for many of those in first because of their commitment to innovation and saving lives. Learn more about the incredible culture at Stryker and view their thousands of positions available around the world at careers.stryker.com. So Julian, let's talk about uh, build process on there. Your team has been known for building modular robots uh, and having just a really great process. So walk us through, show us some examples as well. So this year for us, it was very important to build a, a module robot because we had to take our robot in our suitcases. We didn't want to ship our robot two weeks prior to our first event. Yeah, so or the we, championships even, yeah. yeah. So we made sure uh, we could easily take off subsystems, we could swap them out, and of course for electrical systems this also plays a part. So we made sure that, for example, for the shooter, every single connection that has to go to the drivetrain is down here, so it's easily accessible and all in the same place. Uh, then uh, every system can be swapped out very easily. Uh, we use uh, different types of connectors, and that way we have a, a fully assembled different climber over here, which we could just, if this one breaks, we could just put on in the fly and it's very easy. When you're looking uh, at, at that process and that, um, is the driver behind that like the benefits of modularity or is it it's like, you're like literally like, hey, we have to build this in a suitcase size because we know from a shipping, like what kind of takes priority there? Um, yeah, well, we could, we had to make it much luckier. Uh, it was really uh, we have uh, taking two weeks off of our build time. Sure, is uh, quite a lot, and it costs a lot of money, and we didn't have that money, so building it the suitcase size was the priority. And then from a build process standpoint, can you just talk to me a little about, uh, I, actually on screen here, we have some iterations of your robots uh, throughout the year. So talk to me a little about uh, just kind of going from one event to the next, kind of how you've gone through that process. Yeah, so uh, we went to our first event, our strategy guys, uh, they looked at uh, other games and they looked at the minimum performance we should do at uh, the first regionals. And so we, we decided on shooting low very quickly yep. so we could uh, get the ranking point each time and well we noticed after the uh, first regional that this wasn't going to cut it for the second regional so uh, the guys at home decided to build a top roller for uh, the same shooter which you could just put on in uh, like half an hour um, which uh, made us uh, able to shoot in the high hub instead of the low hub very consistently and then to go, uh, we want to go to champs, of course, since we won our regional. And uh, we saw that it would be useful to shoot from a further distance out, since defense was quite easy uh, on us, uh, since we had to go to the same places every time. So we decided to make an adjustable hood. And we also decided to make a high climb because we can do that very quickly and it gets us four extra points. I love that your first event is the one that you won, right? And yet you still continue to keep trying to improve the process even more. And I think that's that's a real mark of a, of a championship uh, caliber team for that. So let's hop into your robot, Goris, and talk a little bit more about that ball pathing. And of course, your climber. Just love to hear about some of the modifications you've done from your previous events specifically too. Of course. Let's start with the front of the robot at the intake. The intake is what we call our four bar intake. It's made of completely of polycarbonate. And the reason for this is because polycarbonate has some flex in it. And in this way, we are able to have a very sturdy intake that we can use to do anything uh, during the match. We really want to give our drivers the confidence to drive aggressively and to really search for the hard places and get those shots in. Uh, the intake 
flips out like this. The balls go in. Uh, we try to get perfect. Thank you. We try to get two, grab two balls at a time. They move into the shooter and I scored somewhere up in the shooter at the perfect location so that I could, they can be easily taken up into the uh, shooter. Here you see one of the balls go in. Let's go further on to the shooter itself. Uh, oh, by the way, um, our intake, we stayed with the same des design from the first uh, week regional up to the champs. Sure. Uh, we really decided that it was quite good. It was working perfectly, so we didn't see the need for any improvements. Up to the shooter, you can see the ball is currently down here. Uh, it's there, stored there automatically by some of our sensors and it's placed in the perfect position to be uh, moved on next to shooting. Um, in our shooter, uh, like Julian already mentioned, at first at the South Florida event we had a shooter that would shoot from the fender and would only shoot low. Now we have a shooter that could shoot from anywhere on the field and has an adjustable hood so that we could always shoot high. We also have a limelight system here on top and uh, with the limelight system we can uh, see what the distance is to the shooter, uh, calculate what kind of angle we need to make to get the right shot and that way we are able to get quite consistent shots uh, through the whole match. Um, like I said, uh, we changed the shooter quite a lot. We actually did a complete redesign between our Orlando Regional and the Worlds. Yeah. We didn't only just add the adjustable hood and the limelight. We also completely shifted the shape of the shooter a bit more angled backwards so that the weight of the robot was a bit more backwards and so, so that the distance between, uh, for example, the fender and the actual exit of the shooter was a bit greater. Um, lastly, we can also move on to the climber itself. I think it's best shown with our spare climber over here. Uh, our climber uh, uses the, a combination of constant four springs, a neo and a pneumatic brake to uh, climb. Uh, at first we climb with, by releasing the pneumatic brake, then the constant four springs sort of shoot the climber up and we can instantly grab the mid rung. Once grabbing the mid rung, the neo will use a sort of wench system with a, uh, with a cable to pull the robot back down. And after that, we have a flip out arm made of carbon fiber that will flip out and grab the high rung. The reason why we made our flip out arm with carbon fiber is because we wanted the flip out arm to go as fast as possible so that we can really have a very fast uh, high climber. And uh, carbon fiber is just one of the lightest while still strongest materials out there that you can use for this. Um, you might think, why would a team like us that had quite a lot of time to improve that robot go for a high climber? And we actually thought quite a lot about this because at Worlds, we're at a competition where there are a lot of top level teams. Mm -hmm. So we assumed there would be quite a lot of top level traversal climbers. That's why we thought it would be a better idea to have a high climber that could climb very fast because not only do we have a lot of time left over to, do, to get in some extra cycles, but also we give our alliance partners the space and time they need to get in their traversal climbs. Well, otherwise we would most likely be in their way or still be waiting or be bumping into each other. I think for playoffs too, that makes a lot of sense, right? Because your, your cost benefit of staying on the field, uh, you, you can score more than five points, right? Yep. Than the even traverse. So even if That's you true. didn't have robots in the way, that makes a lot of sense to me. Definitely true. So let's uh, wrap up on this robot. Let's talk about some path planning. So Tusa Cornet is going to talk about that. Talk to me about uh, what you're doing and in general, any other systems or you want to speak about as well. Um, so this year we decided to do some path planning and um, you can see here how we do it um, so it's like really easy to like make an, um, an autonomous route for the robot so like if something is not right we just move it over and like test it and on the practice field and hope that it's better and, then, and you can do that really fast we can also like make like new paths also really fast like if, if we want to do something else like uh, we're doing a two ball auto and a two ball steel and um, you can do that really fast or if we have like a new crazy idea you can really easily make it without like having to do a lot of annoying things um, yeah that's it for the path plane we also have like the limelight we had quite a lot of issues with it with tuning and, and stuff because um, like we, we detected the upper hub with it and 
for some reason it wouldn't always align correctly sure um, because it detected other things so that's because this is the first year we're using the limelight like this and in the regions we use it to detect the color of the balls that came into the robot because the color sensor that's in there now um, wasn't working we got some help with it from another team um, so, so now we move it up um, and using it to detect the upper hub so we can auto align it from like far away. Well, I just want to say I think you guys have an absolutely excellent robot and guess what I know you guys didn't hear this yet but your team just won excellence in engineering here on your division as well too so congratulations on that uh, congratulations on fantastic robot Rembrandt's going in the playoffs tomorrow looking fantastic can't wait to see how you do thanks for taking the time and good luck the rest of the way. No problem. Thank you. Thanks to Striker Careers for their support in this video. Apply the skills you gained as a first student or mentor and help change the world at Striker. Striker is the top career choice for many of those in first because of their commitment to innovation and saving lives. Learn more about the incredible culture at Striker and view their thousands of positions available around the world at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.